Well, hello, YouTube viewers. Uh, the topic uh, of today's project is psychiatry and targeted individual, or how reptilian regime is using psychiatry as a tool of inflicting pain on targeted individuals. And I'll be going through many different examples uh, from many different countries, China, Soviet Union, Communist Romania, contemporary Croatia, contemporary Germany, contemporary United States of America, and uh, some other lecturers uh, who's gonna give us a better insight in what is that really. And um, I'll start with um, my theory of uh, three major things, what is that reptilian psychiatry doing and how it's playing game with the people. First is using the truth against you. And I'm going to give you an example of Vasily and Marco Franciscovic. Uh, their examples are excellent. Then the argumentum baculum, the argument of the beating stick, is what I call reptilian higher ground. Because reptilians uh, are authority, they control and own this planet. Whatever they say is the truth, and that goes also for the psychiatry. And this is how they are argumenting their... Uh, truths basically whatever they say is the truth so again the example of Vasily and his psychiatrist and Marco Franciscovic and his lady psychiatrist these are excellent example and the third thing is the what I call guilty by association meaning if person was in the mental institution for the rest of the society he is a crazy person and not to be trusted so once when system uses truth to put you inside and then whatever they say is the truth and then after that you are immediately labeled you know our society is consisted of the applauding hand monkeys who do not see evil hear evil and speak about the evil and then of course you have the holy trinity who is deciding what's the truth for those insane and in many cases stupid messes so First is Vasily. Vasily is the, I think, the classical example of the targeted individual and a dissident from the past. And because it's a past, BBC made a good documentary about it. While in that time, BBC and the British establishment was praising the Romanian couple who was ruling the country. They even gave the Ms. Ceausescu doctorate diploma from physics from that exactly time when he was incarcerated and you know but this was a different time there is a time for ass kissing and then there is a time for criticism right so in his case Vasily tried to organize independent uh, unions and trade organizations this is like big, big no because once you try to organize some political activity which is not in the reptilian agenda means uh, you're not somebody who's schlepping on a reptilian illuminati agenda or something you're trying to create something you want to be targeted and that's exactly what happened to Vasily he was targeted by the Securitat by the Secret Service he was badly beaten a number of times once he made a picture of himself and um, reported it to the police which was a mistake because he was then put into a mental institution excuse me for my bad and uh, his psychiatrist used that truth of him being targeted right as label him a paranoid paranoia by definition is the fear of something which is not real meaning that he used reality against him and then he was so bold that the psychiatrist was so bold that he claimed in his face on the camera that that they never had uh, sane people in that mental institution only sick people but of, of course also admitting that securitat was bringing the people in my intuition, that psychiatrist is the part of the hidden hand or the holy trinity. If he is not a reptile, then he is most probably some psychopath or a Illuminati member. So, that much about the Vasily, and we can see it, guys, perfectly sane as anybody else. Vasily Paraskiv, a working class man from the town of Ploesht, was one of the very few who challenged Ceausescu openly. Nothing could stop him. In 1971, he sent a list of proposals to the party leadership and to the unions, of which he was a member. 
acele 11 propuneri. Those 11 proposals stipulated precisely the democratic rights and freedoms that are enjoyed today by the Romanian trade unions. Astăzi în România. The response of the Securitate was a series of beatings in secluded places, like this forest near his home. M-au bătut, m-au torturat, They beat me. They tortured me. They hit my soles with a rubber stick. They hit my face and my stomach with their fists. And they hit me on the head with bags filled with sand. For seven days and seven nights. Without water and food. This didn't stop Paraskiv fighting for union rights. After being attacked again, this time on the staircase outside his flat, he got himself photographed immediately afterwards. But the worst thing that happened to him was being put in psychiatric hospitals, three times, even though he was perfectly sane. Ceaușescu la Timișoara a spus că numai un noi, un nebun, poate... Ceaușescu had declared that only a madman could disagree with the grand achievements of socialism. And if there were people who disagreed, then they were mad. And the straitjacket was awaiting them. Paraskiv is one of the few victims of the regime who ever got to confront some of his tormentors. After the revolution, he went back to one of the hospitals where he'd been detained. There, he met the hospital's former chief psychiatrist, Dr. Ara Kerestigian. Dr. Kerastigian insisted that Paraskiv was mentally ill, but admitted that the hospital had been used by the regime to isolate troublemakers. Paraskiv's original admission file stated that he suffered from paranoia. The symptoms included publicizing a series of irresponsible complaints against the authorities at home and abroad. Paraskiv says his dignity was destroyed in the hospitals. I would rather have been tried in court and sentenced to years in prison than have my dignity destroyed. Of course, that was the intention of the Securitate. They wanted to convince my workmates that I was not sane and that they should ignore ideas about free trade unions and democratic rights. If anyone was suffering from paranoia, it was Ceausescu. Not just about opposition at home, but also about traveling abroad, as his foreign minister, Stefan André, recalls. As a rule, he didn't eat at official dinners on foreign trips. He had his meals at the embassy, prepared by his own cook. He was accompanied by a chemist who was in charge, among other things, of destroying his excrement so that nobody could examine it to check the state of his health. Colonel Dimitri Berlan of the Securitate was Ceausescu's chief bodyguard. In the respective visits, 
If during a visit he'd shake hands with a foreigner, particularly if he was from the third world, there was always in his entourage either an officer or somebody from the food safety agency who had a medical kit containing tissues dipped in alcohol. And he'd be given one of them to wipe his hands. The example of the Soviet psychiatry is excellent example of the reptilian cynicism. They label dissidents as uh, people who have sluggish schizophrenia and being dissident, um, they, they had diagnosed as um, inflexibility of convictions. So if you're convinced that something is reality, that socialism is not delivering its promise of uh, earthly paradise, people are waiting in lines, if, you know, for a piece of bread, they get nothing, families waiting like, you know, 14 hours in a line to get half pound of butter for somebody's birth cake, right? And if you're criticizing that as a dissident and you don't change your opinion, then you are diagnosed as somebody who's suffering from uh, inflexibility of convictions, which is then sluggish schizophrenia. I also want to add that in many communications I had with the members of the unholy trinity, mostly Illuminati members born in, uh, we also, in, but as a monk or as an employee, I always had this, um, I would call it the attack to change your conviction when you're like, you know, of course, as me expressing something which is heretical, right? then they try to change your conviction. If not, then you actually suffer by being smeared and fired, right? Or ganged up against. So this is just another level of that. And um, what is also very interesting is to see that two million people went through that system in Soviet Union from mid 60s till mid 80s. Two million people, that's 50% uh, of my native country, Croatia, and whole Slovenia, you know, the Mrs. Trump, the Melanie Trump, Melania, uh, she has the same name as my mother, she is coming from Slovenia. By the way, my great-grandfather was from Slovenia, which is like 20 kilometers away from Rijeka, it's already another Slovenian town. So. Uh, yeah, two million people. Up to four or five years per average medicated with heavy, heavy drugs and uh, electroshock beaten for nothing. That was really serious thing, you know. Быть верным и коммунистическим идеалом, убежденно, с революционной настойчивостью, притворять в жизнь Ленинский завет, учиться коммунизму, трудиться самоотверженно, по коммунистически, всей жизнью своей. Утверждать на земле дело Ленина, дело партии. Ленемся! The Soviet regime demanded absolute loyalty. Those who did not tow the party line were considered dissidents and labeled enemies of the state. With no more than a whisper to the secret police, they would vanish into one of these special psychiatric hospitals. Despite the risks, these so-called dissidents put their ideas of freedom into action. Я вел жизнь тайную, конспиративную. Никто не знал, что я это делал. У меня была маленькая подпольная типография, и я стал делать листовки. While others considered themselves loyal Soviet citizens. Я, например, считал то уверенно считал, что я один из лучших советских людей. Когда уже даже меня арестовали и, и написали особо опасный государственный присутствие, я рассмеялся. Я при нем, при этом же сам нынешнем генерале, рассмеялся. Он меня вызывает психиатра на утро. According to Soviet psychiatrists, they all suffered from inflexibility of convictions, a symptom of a new disorder, sluggish schizophrenia. 
Вот когда добьешь все, тогда я заеду. Так до конца пей. Пей, 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 Like their counterparts in other countries, the Soviet psychiatrists prescribed powerful drugs to cure their patients. Проглатывают, все, ротовая полость чистая. И потом вот такие делают какие-то движения, а отрыгивают. Врач на обходе говорит, как себя чувствуете, Петр Петрович? Я говорю, послушайте, вот, а, а там, э, когда э, 5 кубиков галоперидола, то да, например, слюна до полу, там перекошенность вся, значит, одни мышцы растягиваются, другие сокращаются. Совершенно ужасные позы, лицо все ужасное. На душе страшно просто. Я человека, вот самое главное, описать, описать это состояние невозможно. Санитары совершенно безнаказанно могли избивать. По любому поводу. Или вообще без повода. Вот, например, санитар открывает дверь. И вот, если со... Тут ты оказался, например, в этом в проеме двери. И вот этого достаточно было, чтобы, скажем, получить удар. Если больной, скажем, оказывал сопротивление при избиении, то его могли привязать и привязывали, и уже избивали, и продолжали избивать уже привязанного. Проходит, допустим, год, два, там выписывает убийц, выписывает насильников. Михаил, ты бы лучше убил бы кого-нибудь, мне бы легче было тебя отсюда убытывать. Это было вот from 1967 to 1987 the Soviet government arrested over two million people who for political reasons were diagnosed as mentally sick and were forced to undergo psychiatric treatment even today psychiatry remains the coercive I think the use of psychiatric uh, treatment, so-called treatment, as a political weapon is very effective in controlling the masses. The Soviets were very uh, expert on uh, incarcerating their political dissidents. They would either send them to concentration camps up in the Arctic Circle where they would be worked to death, or in many cases they'd put them into psychiatric wards and punish them. They would punish them with drugs and electric shock and that sort of thing. I think the example that uh, we see in China today is very instructive. China is, a, is a, uh, a good or a bad example, depending on how you look at it. I say it's a good example because it shows us how a totalitarian regime can um, use psychiatry as a political weapon to, to discipline and torture, literally, and frighten people into submission. What's happening here in the United States seems to be following in the same footsteps. Of, uh, of the path that's already been taken in China. There's a, something called the Mayak Report, a very secret report issued to law enforcement agencies in which they said, beware anybody that's opposed to the income tax is talking about defending the Constitution or supported a third party political candidate. Individual freedoms are going down while government power and control is going up. And you just lay a mental ruler along that graph in your mind for the last 20 or 30, 40 years, and project it into the future. And you can see where it's going. If we were to have a mandatory um, a mental health screening, as they like to call it, not only of all of the young people in school, but all adults and everybody, it would become uh, a, a terribly effective tool in the hands of totalitarians. Because surely you could find something in everybody's questionnaire if they answer questions honestly. Have you ever had feelings of anxiety? Uh, you know, are you, do you, are you ever unhappy with what the government does? You put that in the context of what everything else that's happening in society, the growth of government, the growth of big government, the diminishing of personal freedoms, the desire to regiment the population and eliminate opposition to the political leaders. When we put it into that picture, 
now it takes on a very special meaning. When you look at the area of um, psychiatry, it becomes particularly worrisome because many people are not sensitized to the political implications of using that field. If we're not willing to challenge, and if we're already afraid that somebody's going to put this label around us, then we've already lost. There's no turning it around. The time has come for, for us to stand on our convictions, to know what is right, to take the risks, and stand for freedom. Dr. Colin Ross, who was uh, investigating the CIA psychiatry and their drugs and their methods they used on uh, single out individuals like MK Ultra, but also masses, he said very clearly that we, the psychiatrists, we use psychiatry against people which we don't like either politically or sociologically. So, again, the rule of psychiatry is, in my opinion, like it has two major rules. One rule is to take out of the society all those damaged and sick people who are then threat to themselves and their, you know, families and society in general, right? The real sick people but then also another purpose is to single out and smear the healthy individuals which are more healthy than average and they see at least part of the picture of the insanity we are in like those Soviet uh, dissidents right who simply uh, could not mentally be uh, part of that hypnotized um, hyper normalized masses right so this is another purpose of the psychiatry, and I think this is very clear to us now. Thank you. 